Back at CES, Asus announced a big refresh lineup of ROG gaming laptops with fancy new CPUs and GPUs. However, now that I have the 2023 ROG Surface M16 in my hand, there's another feature I really want to talk about. It's gorgeous mini LED display. Now at this point, some of you might be saying, hold on, doesn't the M16 come with Nvidia's latest 40 series mobile graphics cards? Isn't that the most important upgrade? It does. And with support for up to an RTX 4090, the M16 is definitely really beefy. But at the same time, all the performance in the world doesn't matter if the screen attached to your computer sucks. You're still not gonna have a fun time. And on a laptop that might never get connected to an external display, that goes double. So before we talk about specs and features, we should probably do a quick recap on the differences between a traditional LCD screen and a mini LED panel. Admittedly, the distinction can be a bit confusing because both LCD and mini LED screens use LEDs specifically as backlights. The difference is that the LEDs in a mini LED display are about half the size or smaller than what you'd find in a typical LCD screen. So manufacturers can fit more of them inside a given device. Then, by sorting those mini LEDs into groups, display makers can create tons of local dimming zones, 1024 on the N16 to be exact which can then be turned on and off individually. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have the M16 next to one of Asus's older gaming laptops, the ROG Strix G15 from 2021. Now don't get me wrong, the screen on the G15 is fine, but compared to the M16, there's an obvious difference. Oh, and look at that huge chin. When you look at this test pattern, you can see how there appears to be a ring of light that leaks from bright objects when sitting on top of a dark background. This is a classic example of blooming. However, one thing that most people don't think about is that blooming can also cause screens to look washed out, especially in games featuring darker environments. So let's boot up Elden Ring to see another example. Here, you can see how the G15 screen looks lighter compared to the M16, which in darker scenes often makes it harder to see things like fine textures or enemies waiting in the shadows. This is because old school LCDs can't adjust their backlights with the same granularity as mini LED panels, which makes scenes like this look sorta hazy. And it's not just in games, because that reduced blooming makes everything look better, from basic boot animations to photos and movies. That said, the contrast of mini LED screens still isn't quite as good as OLEDs, which can turn off each light emitting pixel individually, but it's still a noticeable improvement over typical LCDs. On top of that, because a mini LED panel can pack more diodes into the same size panel, they offer higher peak brightness. In standard dev content, the M16 puts out around 600 nits compared to the G15, which sits at around 330 nits. And in HDR content, Asus touts a peak brightness of up to 1100 nits, which makes supported games and movies look fantastic. Finally, while it's not directly related to using mini LED tech, Asus has also increased the M16's refresh rate up to 240 hertz, up from 165 hertz on the previous model. The M16 isn't the first ROG laptop with a mini LED display though. That was the Zephyrus Duo 16 from last year. But as the tech continues to mature, Asus has also been able to do things like double the number of dimming zones, while also creating a proprietary dimming algorithm to really take advantage of that new tech. And while current OLED laptop displays still suffer from a few shortcomings compared to LCD displays, such as lower refresh rates and the need to have glossy screens to really boost color saturation, mini LED screens don't have quite as many compromises. After using this thing for a few weeks, I can really see why Asus is pushing to add similar displays on as many of its gaming laptops as it can. I mean, it just looks so much better. Okay, but what's the rest of the laptop like? While its chassis is largely unchanged, Asus has made a few tweaks, including removing the Ethernet jack and adding its anime or anime, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, matrix LED lighting to the lid, which is one of my favorite examples of a low power level design feature. That's because you can turn it on when you want to show off and even customize it with your own graphics. But when you want to hide from any nosy Saiyans, it's over 9,000, you know, as one does, you can simply turn it off and you're back to having a relatively stealthy matte black system. Now, you may have noticed that there is a small dent on the lid, which is my fault. It happened when I was first unboxing the M16 and while I was taking off the plastic, which is a bit slippery, I dropped the power brick on the lid. 
Asus, I'm sorry, that's my bad. But at least we know those Matrix LEDs are pretty durable. Meanwhile, thanks to a new Intel Core i9-13900H chip and up to an NVIDIA 4090 GPU, the M16 has excellent performance. Really, it just flies. And in tests like PC Mark 10, the M16 posted scores that are 20% higher than what we got from a similarly priced Razer Blade 15 from 2022. That said, on our fully loaded review unit, which goes for $3,500, you don't get quite the very fastest components compared to newer rivals like the Blade 16, which features an i9-13900HX CPU and a 175 watt version of the 4090 compared to the 150 watt card that Asus is using here. And then there are downsides to packing all this performance in a relatively sleek gaming notebook. Not only does the M16 run pretty hot, its fans are loud too. That said, it's been kind of chilly up here in the Northeast. So if you want, you can use the vent on the right side of the system to keep your hands nice and toasty. Thankfully, you can set the laptop to silent via Asus's Armory Crate app, but suffice to say, you're not really gonna wanna use this thing on your lap for any sort of serious gaming. Alternatively, because the M16 has rather punchy stereo speakers, you can simply turn up the volume to drown out all that worrying. You know, just as long as you don't mind disturbing pretty much everyone else in your home. And sadly, while it's probably not a big surprise, the M16's battery life is mediocre at best. On our standard local video rundown test, it lasted just five hours and 18 minutes. And that was using the system's onboard graphics and not its discrete GPU. You'll get even worse times if you do that. So in the end, what we have here is a really powerful but also relatively portable gaming laptop that can make mincemeat out of pretty much any game or app you can throw at it. Sure, it runs hot and its battery life isn't great, but its new mini LED display means that everything from Instagram to Cyberpunk 2077 and Dune will look awesome. For people who don't want to spend over three grand on a fancy new gaming notebook, there are more affordable versions of the Zephyrus M16 as well, starting at around 1950 for the same i9 chip with an RTX 4070 GPU, and most importantly, that gorgeous mini LED display. And for my money, that's the one I'd get. So, are mini LED displays something you care about now? I kinda hope so. Let us know down in the comments, and we're also trying out some new formats for our videos, so let us know what you think about that too. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Engadget for more news, reviews, and hands-ons real soon.